Generic growth hormone versus farm grade. Just want to talk about this. Um, it's a subject you you might see on social media. You might see mainly back in the day on bodybuilding forums. You have people that are all or nothing, meaning farm grade only, and you're just wasting your time. You're burning your cash. You're taking a, a lighter, lighter fluid and matches and burning your cash because all generic, all, all generic is garbage and it's a waste of time and money. So you have that crowd of people that is very adamant about pharmaceutical grade growth hormone, name brand growth hormone only because all generic. So I just have a little issue with that that bold statement that, you know, that it's conclusive pretty much. That all generic, red top, yellow top, green top, blue top, whatever, is just completely trash or not, um, not really what it is. It's just not true. I agree, pharmaceutical grade, if you can get a legit pharmaceutical grade connection and you have the monetary means to continuously afford that and not jeopardize other parts of your livelihood and finances and putting growth hormone first. If you have enough money to afford it comfortably, absolutely go with, you know, the pharmaceutical grade, the 99 plus percent purity, gold standard, all the checks and balances, everything checks out as far as, um, the criteria at that level, it's very sanitary, sterile, um, all that stuff. Great. However, to make a statement uh, and say that all generics are completely crap and don't even bother is just not accurate. I've used both. I've used a lot of generic and I've used a lot of pharmaceutical grade. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to afford pharmaceutical grade just fine. And I've had good experience with, with both. I've only had one bad experience with generics. I got ripped off in 2012 with some kig tropins, which a lot of people did. That was a huge thing. They were hyped up on the internet forums heavily, and then they were completely garbage. I did GH serum tests multiple times, um, booted 10 IUs, 20 IUs, even three bottles one time, nothing. So it was literally you know, filler, ma malatol, or who knows what filler is, just garbage. So, the thing that also is interesting is anyone that is pro-farm grade and anti-generic, you hear things that have most likely been perpetrated throughout internet forums is where all this really started. And then now it moves on to the Facebook platforms and other social media platforms, etc. Is that, wow, you know, those Chinese over there, they're putting in antidiuretic chemicals to trick you. They're embedding and lacing that powder with antidiuretic chemicals. Who knows? Something that it triggers aldosterone, your sodium hormone. Maybe corticosteroids in there. So you get puffy and gain water weight, blood pressure, to mimic high dose overdose growth hormone. Those Chinese chemists or people, whoever they are, very crafty. And you know what? They might even elevate those generics, those damn fake generics, might even elevate your IGF-1 levels and growth hormone serum levels on blood levels. Chinese, those Chinese guys over there, <laughs> probably putting in IGF-1 to spike the IGF or just tons of peptides. Listen, they damn sure aren't putting in legitimate insulin growth factor one because I'm pretty sure that stuff's pretty expensive. So they're not going to just put a legitimate IGF-1 in there to trick you to make you think you have growth hormone. They're just going to put, it's growth hormone. It's, it is growth hormone. Don't think it's peptides. 
peptides are in, in and out of your system 10 to 15 minutes. So if anyone out there has real proof, not just hearsay, dogma perpetrated throughout forum, you know, crap that's just been going on for 10 years. If you have proof that there is antidiuretic hormone in there and chemicals that have been tested, you have the proof of the testing, valid proof, please message me, email me, tell me. Be like, hey, Matt, these guys are really, really conniving con artists, and they are going out of their way to mimic at any cost growth hormone. Silly. I think it's silly. Now, here's the thing. I've done growth hormone serum tests, which is acutely measure it, but most importantly, I've done IGF-1 tests. My recent blood test was on hydrotropin, expired hydrotropin, the green tops that are eight I use. Had them from 2014. Two I use a day right now, my TRT. IGF-1 level is 400 and something. Top end of normal is 250. Not only generic, they're expired. And my golly, they're putting my IGF-1 levels through the roof, apparently. Maybe I respond really well to growth hormone. When my body breaks down and interprets it in the blood, who knows? Some people respond well to low-dose tests. Some people on 100 milligrams of test a week are at the high end of normal. I'm at 200 and I'm at the high end of normal, so I don't respond maybe as well as tests as far as my blood, who knows, but my growth hormone response seems to be good. So I had good luck with hydrotropin green tops, hydrotropin brown tops, kefi or kefe. Good uh, luck with my very first experience with growth hormone was riptropins in 2012. And this wasn't me getting special product because my form name and, and who I am and my name and people know I have clients, they want to give me just the best stuff. So they, so they precisely just give me a good kit. No, this was through a good friend of mine who I had not, no one, it was just through a friend who isn't, who isn't a name or anyone that would get a special uh, package or a special um, product who I bought from. And, and I blew up and I changed and I morphed and I, after two to three months in, I just, I just looked different. I remember looking at a picture. We took a picture and I, I was, I took a step back and I couldn't believe how much just rounder and fuller and just like more three dimensional I looked. And, and that was the result of, of introducing growth hormone. It was generic. The rip tropins at four I use a day. Prior to that, I used IP pharmaceuticals, yellow tops for only six weeks. Um, so that started it off, but I only had a little bit of that, but the rip tropins were the initiation. And then I've had success, like I said, the other ones, the Hyges and Red Top Ganovas. 2014, I switched to Serostems. I tried Humatrope. I tried Sazen. I've tried the Omnitrope. And I've tried Gentropin. Um, great product. But I can't really differentiate too much of a difference between any of the, gen uh, the generics. I still stayed big, round, and full. I still kept that look regardless of farm grade or generic so the main thing i want to drive home guys is don't write off generics as all 100 percent being garbage or worthless i'm sure there are a ton that are terrible counterfeit garbage completely nothing and you do waste your money but always consider doing those two tests growth hormone serum but even more so importantly, perhaps, would be the IGF-1 test. So the IGF-1 test would be working at the cellular level. You've been taking it ongoing a couple weeks or months. You build up, and then you do an IGF-1 test to see how well that your body is converting it in the liver. The growth hormone serums more acutely. You do it approximately two and a half to three and a half hours prior to an intramuscular injection. You can test if it spikes your serum levels. But I would do both. Um, far as, you know, purity, well, yeah, the generics probably are going to be not 99 plus percent pure. They could be 95, 98, 97, whatever fillers are in there to bulk up the powder, um, to make it look like there's something in there instead of just a speck. Um, you know, who knows? Some people have said, oh, well, I've gotten really, uh, crazy side effects on generic and bloated up and blah, 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 blah. You know, it just goes to show that everyone's different because I've gotten those type of side effects on Humatrope one time 
at, at just 3.3 I use a day or something like that and I felt uh, lethargic and really sleepy immediately and and I had some just kind of different side effects just from Humatrope for whatever reason whereas Omnitrope and Serostim didn't do that so there were some variations there but you know uh, and I have a, and I have my good friends in the industry that that are all farm or nothing and that's great you know I you know I think that's awesome uh, but just from my experience and, and clients I've seen firsthand morph and change just fine on generics guys um, but like I said if you guys have proof that they're really putting in and lacing these uh, special chemicals to mimic and replicate the side effects of growth hormone let me know if you really have like tangible or real evidence or something that you know um, is trustworthy for us documentation or whatever I'd be very curious because I just get a kick out of people that still kind of keep that that fairy tale alive of you know the Chinese are just so they're just so damn clever uh, but so that's it growth hormone farm grade versus generic you have the financial means go farm grade you have the connection solid consistently go for it awesome stuff obviously um, if you have a good uh, generic connection and you know it's good your blood's good your results are good you're golden man that's all there is to it